conception of the piece? A really lovely sound, very clear sound, good projection. What is the guitar you're playing? Uh, this is an Antonio Lorente. From? Um, I'm afraid I'm not super sure. Uh, it might say in there, but uh, it does not have the date as I see it. The um, Marietta. That's what I know about the guitar. Is that what you're asking Is it Italian or? I'm afraid I'm not sure. I got it huh. used from someone, so. Yeah. Interesting. Well, it's got a good sound. It works okay. for you. Very good. And um, good right hand position. Just a couple little things. One is I want to ask you in, in good rhythm, too. In this section. Hmm. I've never noticed that before. It actually is a portamento lock there. What edition is this? Um, I'm afraid I'm not sure off the top of my head. Should I double check that? Hmm. Nobody else happens to have another copy with them of the, the score from a book. It, I see this here, but it sounds very odd to me. And it, it um, try it without for a moment. One never knows in these kinds of things exactly what is meant. Normally, we would see this gliss mark and do what you did, mm -hmm. but it really does sound odd. Uh, try it without and see how it goes. It just is it's just not musical. It seems to also kind of break up the rhythm. It, it does a lot of things. Okay. So we're, we're just going to cross that off. And uh, as I say, I have never seen that before. And I've never heard it before. So the other thing I want to ask you about is when we get a little bass figuration. Right here. Could you play this for me? Maybe to get in the spirit of it, you could just take it from this little chord okay. section. Okay, so uh, if you're going to do this portamento, which can be very nice, you need to. to stay on the note a little bit longer. Generally speaking, when you have two notes and one portamentos to the other, where you have that little wisp of sound in between, if you don't do a slight tenuto on the first note, then it sounds like an awkward fingering. If you do a slight tenuto on the note, then it sounds like a beautiful nuance. So let's see, it should be the E here. If you could just try it from there. Is this note. So the E needs to be held longer. The E you're leaving so quickly that with that combined with the portamento it sounds like an awkward guitar fingering. However, you can transform that into a beautiful nuance by just holding the E a little longer. Okay. That might be a little too, a little long, too long, so okay. somewhere in between too long and too short. Try it again. Okay. It's getting there. Now just try a little bit more so you get into the spirit of it. Okay. And now I'm going to just try a little experiment myself to see if there's anything else I can do with that. Yeah, um, I've had 
Exactly. Extra guitar. Exactly. Um, got it beginning of my second semester, so it should have been one and a half years around. Okay. So you're starting up, and what finger are you starting with on the F? You're going one, two, are you doing one, two, one, two? sometimes to port them in from one finger to a different finger. So I'm going to have to experiment now with going four to four and then four to three and see how that feels before I turn it over to you. Okay. <laughs> That's going to three. You know, the, the going to three is going to be more subtle and more elegant. Listen to the difference. Shut your eyes for a second. I'm not going to tell you which one I'm doing. How was that? It's close. So do I. Guess what? Three to four. Oh my goodness, that's four to three. Yes. So it it just uh, it connects better because you're not traveling all the frets with the same fingers. Versus just something more awkward about that. This is a, just a little more subtle. So I'm not going it. with four. You're going four four, right? Well, I'm just or saying, like, you, go to the, you kind of go to the fourth fret and then you train. Well, I have to go to the fourth fret. I can't change the notes. Okay. So that that I can't do, but I can change the finger that goes to the fourth fret. So in this case, I'm going from the fourth finger to the third finger on the third fret. Mm -hmm. Isn't that the note, the fret we yes. want? Yes. Yes. So as opposed to going with this finger. So just try that. Let's just make it even simpler. Right. Now remember, we're going to have to hold the E a little longer. So I'm going to put a little tenuto marking on top of your E in red to remind you. Tomorrow, what were we talking about? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. And then um, I'll, I'll put a three here. How about that? Instead of, you don't have anything written, that's why I asked what you're doing, but instead of a four, you're going with a three. So you'll go from a four, I'll write the four so you don't get confused about that, and you're going to go to the three. So just do this. Good. Now do... So what I'm going to do is start with the smallest possible unit. What's the smallest possible unit? of anything you could practice on this instrument, or any instrument. <laughs> Take a guess. The smallest possible unit. Two notes. One. One. So in this case, one won't help us. But if it were a chord, that would help us. If we had a chord that was hard, or I was missing that, I would have you practice slamming technique. You practice hitting all the fingers in the right places. Strings, and that's that would be an example of practicing one beat. In this case, we would practice two because we don't have a chord. We can't just practice that. So, so. good. And now we're going to add one more note in front of that. Excellent. Do it again. Good. Now uh, let's see if we can add another note. And remember, you have to hold it a little longer. Good. Now, I'm noticing that beautifully you're not squeaking. Do you have old strings? Do you have polished strings? Or are you just brilliant? 
Uh, all the above. <laughs> this might be a little bit old, to be honest. So uh, they're not very squeaky. Okay. They, they look like they're old. Yeah. So if you were squeaking, what would you do to avoid the squeak? Do you, you know anything about that? Um, generally, I thought it's like you try to kind of glide over the string as opposed to kind of have too much pressure on it with friction, but I guess... Well, it, even if it, I have new strings, so if I were to glide over, I could be very squeaky if I wanted. I might have been pressing. So there are three ways, if you're doing a portamento, to not squeak. Now, if you're not doing a portamento and you're lifting, oh, you just lift and go, and you don't squeak. So what are the three ways to not squeak? And I talk about it in the answer book that I passed out classical guitar answer book. Any idea what those three ways might be, in case you ever have new strings? Um, <laughs> well, you know you want to get off the callus, because that's pushing the air into the pockets. So there are three ways to get off the callus. One is to go to the flat part of the finger, just beyond the callus. The other is the right side or the left side. Each situation is different, so you'd have to really try it out in each situation. In this case, let's see what works. Certainly going to the flat part. I could also go to this side. It won't work to go to this side because that would mess up your hand position. But I could go flat and this way, or let's see. I could even just do the side. Uh, so you have two choices. So if that ever happens, that those three ways, right, left, or down, down from the callus, will get rid of your squeak to the most, for the most part. That's also something, when you start, how do you start the piece? What are you doing? One to one. So you're going one to one, okay. And, and how are you doing that to avoid the squeak? Are you just, um, I, I guess have you I'm, ever made a noise when you have new strings? Yes. Okay. Did you ever figure out what to do when you have new strings? So, I mean, I guess technically I have been trying to do it. I wasn't thinking necessarily like left or right from mm -hmm. the callus. I, I, like the one time, it was sort of dead on the callus, so right. I, I moved it a little bit. Okay, so, and it worked? Yeah. Um, I kind of thought, move my hand sort of that way. You could always do the flat part, so here, the I'm not squeaking, and I have very new strings. So that works. Let's see. You could possibly do the this side probably wouldn't work as well, oh, okay. but any of those would be an excellent way to avoid the squeak at the beginning of the piece. So here now, let's see if you can do this whole thing, starting Good, and then I think you have a chord, right? Yeah. See how that doesn't yeah. sound so good when you don't give a long enough time to the E? Let's just go back to this for a second. <laughs> and practice with the chord, because that part we, we didn't really do. Excellent, do it a few times. Good. And you might want to do rest stroke on your thumb, just so that you don't lose the bass line once you get to the chord. Taking that situation of the chord, let me just see if you can do a row stroke. How does that work for you? It's tricky. Oh, right. So it would be this. Yeah, a little bit tricky, I guess. So you haven't practiced that, so there's, a, there's an exercise that I can give you that will make that very easy. So whenever you get to a situation where you want to bring out a bass note um, and it might involve using a rest stroke in the thumb. It's also described in the answer book. It's a technique where we do something that's twice as hard. Have you ever done something twice as hard, then you go to the half as hard and it's really easy? Yeah. And that used to be the hard thing? Okay, so in this case, what we're gonna do is train you to do two rest strokes at the same time, one with the thumb and one with the finger. Then when you go to this, this is gonna be easy. So the first exercise is 
every four beats, there will be two rest strokes. One with a finger, one with a thumb. So that's the first note. So one, two, three, four, everything else was free stroke. The next one, so I'm doing thumb and M finger rest stroke. The first one is thumb and A finger rest stroke. Next one is thumb and M finger rest stroke. So let's just try just that. So if you're ever doing contrapuntal music, Bach fugues, anything that requires you to have the control of individual fingers for individual notes, this is essential. Anytime you need to bring out a bass line or a melodic line and you don't want to be flustered like this, this is a great technique to do it. So it's, it's spelled out in the answer book. And uh, one other great advantage of this particular exercise, does anybody have any idea what the other great advantage is? I'll just play it for a second. See if you can figure it out. What do you notice about my right hand? staying in the position. Now, have you ever noticed that people have difficulty sometimes switching from free stroke to rest stroke? They do this for the rest stroke and this for the free stroke? Yeah. Well, that won't work very well when you have to, a split second in which to change. So if we often need to switch between rest stroke and free stroke in the course of a, a line, a phrase, a piece, and there's no time to go dancing around with the position. So this forces you to figure out and train your hand to be able to do alternating back and forth between free and rest stroke without moving your hand. So there, there are two exercises, actually. There's this one, and what, what chords am I using here? Mila Lobos. Mila Lobos, H one. Comes in handy. Otherwise, you just sit there and do that. It's boring. This, you can actually make it into something musical. What I'm doing is, is making a, an equal quality of uh, sound and a tone between the free and rest stroke. So that too is important in the musical realization in a piece when you're switching back and forth. You don't want something strange, awkward, and sudden. You want it to be smooth and seamless. So the next part, the next exercise, part two, is a little even trickier. <laughs> so that one um, not only has an has now I finger. Watch what happens. And of course you have to be able to do it, play the notes perfectly in sync together. Now, look at this one. You have to land on the same string with both fingers. Oh, I'll try this at home. Okay. <laughs> so let's try the first one. This is, uh, that would be third string and the sixth. Good, you just did it. Now the next one would be actually the fifth string. Oh, fifth string. Yeah. You land, you land on the fourth. Right, so you would just practice that first before you get into the, the exercise. And then the other one as well. And it really is transformative to be able to do that and to be able to do it without having to think. And anybody who has an issue with hand bouncing or uh, inability to switch between free and rest stroke, this will solve it. It's really great. So any questions? I think we've tackled the two parts of your otherwise really beautifully realized rendition. Thank you. Um, yes? In the middle section, now I've heard this, you know what I'm talking about? The, yeah, the middle section, yeah. When he goes up to the 12th floor, well, my little finger in the 12th fret. Mm -hmm. The chord there. The chord, okay, let me, let's go find that. Is it not at the beginning of the middle section, but later on? The middle section should just be on one, yeah, just on one page. So how far up, are you, up to this chord he's probably talking about, okay? That, that one. Now, I've heard that's kind of how I played it. Okay? But and I it's got to be right. Just where you, you don't pause so much on that chord and the, the K 
cadence is really nice in the net left. From the chord to the next piece or before the chord? Uh, play the. And now go. Right there. So you're talking about the, the pause is after the chord or before the chord? Well, you play the chord and you sustain it usually. Right. Okay, in other words, to do a longer arpeggio like he's yeah, doing. Yeah, you put the emphasis there. Yeah. And I heard it done other where the, it's not quite so much emphasis mm -hmm. on that chord, and it cadences on those other, the final chord. Uh, so like, you uh, you yeah. can do it a variety of ways. I mean, it's, there's absolutely no one way to do this. And I, I'm sure the way you've heard it in this way, both work. Let's, let's go back to the beginning then, see now without that little list thing. Uh, if you can. So, the uh, second section? Yeah. Oh, okay. So, what he's doing is really broadening the, the tempo, actually, of mm -hmm. that 3-4. It's pretty broad there. You might not necessarily have to take so long. But let's try less, less, less change of tempo. Okay. That's pretty much what you just did. Now, okay. so, so if you were <laughs> if you were doing it, um, actually, that's not changing tempo. No, it's, it's actually pretty accurate. It's actually right. So is he doing it longer than you're used to or shorter than you're used to? Kind of like I did, it would be longer on that chord. Sustaining mm -hmm. that, that chord. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's working. And, and, you know, you have a, a range of possibilities there. Good. You know, I, I, I can't remember his name, the Polish guitarist Ireland or something. It, it doesn't matter. It's, it's just the idea that there are different ways of doing it, and certainly well, elongating I, that know, first chord is fine. I heard that and I went, whoa. Yeah, I'm not, you know, I'd have to hear it. Uh -huh. But in any case, uh, any other questions? Are we, we good on this one? Thank you so much. Thank you very much. <laughs>